last year when Lola was exhibiting at the Autograph Gallery, um, I saw that this show was on and I've always been a fan of Lola's work. I really, really love her photography. Um, but we hadn't met in person and I saw that she was going to be at the gallery. Um, as she's based in New York and so this, this was a, a rare opportunity to meet her in London. I didn't have in mind actually before, before that day that I would ask Lola if she would sit for me at all. I, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. You know, I was very familiar with Sarah's work. She's painted a lot of uh, my friends and people who I admire. And I just love the style. I love your style, Sarah. Um, you know, I think partly because I'm a portrait photographer, uh, in general, when people ask me to model for them, I'm always quite up for it because I spent my whole life um, <clears throat> asking people to model for me. Our work is very much about identity and visibility um, and platforming, amplifying people um, who maybe don't always get their portraits painted. I guess in some ways, just thinking about it now, we we kind of speak the same language. So we didn't really have to have a lot of verbal communication. And so even in the posture, you know, the sort of like strong posture that I'm, I'm, sh I'm shown in, it's a similar kind of thing that I, I use for my models. Sometimes I say, think about power, pride, so that when they're focusing on me, they're kind of standing up a little bit taller and they're kind of presenting this strong, proud person. All of us are very proud of who we are. Um, you know, to be cliche, we're out and proud. There was no nervousness or anything. I, I Sarah, I felt like I, I knew you, also knowing that we were on the same path to making, I think to making both photography and painting a more honest and true story of all of our lives. Well, I think portraiture as a genre, particularly in this country, is really loaded. Um, Often it's been used as a prop to sort of, you know, emphasize status, wealth, um, even sort of to do, you know, it's often tied into land ownership, it can be very heteronormative. Um, and I think really my work is, is very much about trying to add to that, trying to widen the genre in, in whatever small way I can. And to depict people from my community, from the queer community, to depict women as well. Um, and people of color, black and minority, minority ethnic people, um, trans people, people who are intersex, you know, people who fall anywhere in that LGBTQI plus spectrum. Um, I think it's really important. And I think uh, seeing people um, out there who are successful and, and being themselves in a really authentic way is um, just, it's so vital for, for younger generations, for people who maybe aren't seeing those role models in their lives. Myself and anyone really from, from any kind of a, a minority or um, community has, it's changing now, but you know, I'm 60, so I grew up when there weren't really any magazines for people of color other than like Ebony, um, and now there are a lot more. So my point is we just didn't see our images. So I used to just use my imagination, you know, if I saw the Mona Lisa, I put like my auntie's face on it, you know, you know, fast forward, when I started creating my own work, I realized, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I've got to show the rest of the people that, that have come before me and that are coming, you know, the younger folks that are coming in. You know, I have to give them images that they can look at, that they can think, oh, I can be like that, or wow, I'm proud of my community, um, you know, so that they actually could see themselves. Growing up, not being able to see my own reflection, was not damaging for me. I think it's actually something that spurred me on. You know, James Baldwin says that he, he, he said that um, the reason why, that he enjoyed being black and queer because it made him get up in the morning. So when someone thinks of a black person, I don't think the first thing they think of is a doctor. You know, I mean, growing up, I had all black doctors. You know, I lived in a black community and we had all black doctors and I had many black teachers. So, you know, I'm a teacher, but sometimes when I, uh, you know, when I get on a bus, I sometimes wonder how many people look at me and think, oh, oh there's a teacher, you know? So we, as, as visual artists, I, I believe, you know, again, that's our responsibility to change those narratives and to, to uplift all these different folks who haven't had a chance to. You know, when we look at white privilege, uh, you know, which is another conversation that we're having a lot here in America, 
I'm kind of like kind of floored that so many people are, are just realizing that they have white privilege. I don't understand that. And, and the fact that, so that's problematic to me, but at the same time, I think that it's really important for you to continue painting black and brown people. I mean, one, because you're such a great painter and you just make us all look so powerful and strong. Um, and also because that's part of what you have that you can offer the community that, for instance, that I don't have. It would be great if everything was equal, but it's not. And you can either, you know, fall or you can rise to the occasion.